Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Welcome then. back. Thank you very how much. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? It's been a long day. It, it always is. An entrepreneurial journey. It always I know. is. I know. Just want to know, you know, so just tell the people watching, you know, what, what do you do? And also, this book, you, you wrote a book, and it's amazing where that book has taken you. 100%. Isn't it? Because it's like opened up doors you would never, ever believe you could walk through. I'll try, I'll try in a nutshell. So I started my journey uh, buying property uh, back in 2009. And we always knew that, you know, buying and holding and renting it out on a multiple latency occupancy, we always knew that at some point in time it would turn out into property development. So we knew that, right? Somewhere down the line, before we got to property development, obviously we did the one, uh, we did the journey previous to that, which is the building side of things, construction. That didn't go too well. Um, so it, that really took a knock effect on me. I think um, it really allow, uh, allow it, instead of allowing me to express who I was in business, and I think that's what we should do as an entrepreneur. Um, regardless if you're good at what you're actually doing, you should always express yourself. Be in a position that you can express who you are. What year was this? This was about 2016. Right. 2016. And um, I found that instead of me expressing myself, I was suppressing myself because of everything that was going wrong. As it does, not crying about it, uh, but you know, when you come out on the other side, you start really looking back and trying to join dots of where did I go wrong? Where did I lose myself? Uh, how come I became such an introvert? You know, that's not who I was. That's not who I like to be. But why did I drag it for so long being that? Do you person? think you had a little bit of depression? Do you know what? Do you think because there's a lot of you know pressure? Uh, you know, it could have been a little bit of de depression. I think or... so. I think so. I yeah. think so. I think so. And I'll go as far as um, you know, not looking after my mental health. Yeah. Um, you know, because obviously when business isn't going well, uh, you neglect everything in your life. Yeah. You neglect love, you neglect your personal mm -hmm. um, looking, you know, you don't eat well, yeah. your diet goes out the window because you're so focused on making it better, mm -hmm. right? So when I came out on the other side, um, I started to realize that um, self is the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know, regardless what goes out externally of you, if you're not looked after, number one, everything you execute out is not going to materialize with the outcome that you want. Yeah. So the purpose of the book, I guess... If who told you to write the book? Um, I was already writing the book while yeah. I was suppressed. Yeah. It was the only way that I can express my feelings and thoughts, so yeah. I started to write. Yeah. So, um, it was, you know, I'll be in, I'll, I'll be in indoors um, by myself, or in the car by myself, and things would just come to me, you know, mm -hmm. and I would just start writing. It turned out... So was it like more like a diary? More like a diary, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I used to put chapters, right? So I used to put chapter one chapter. So I had about... 14 chapters, yeah. and uh, if you look at it, it's about, uh, the average is about 10 pages per yeah. chapter. Yeah, how um, many words? Oh, I don't know how many words, but it was about 10 pages per yeah. chapter. Yeah. And I always knew that I'd write a book about the journey, but I never felt that I was ready to release a book mm. about the journey because I hadn't accomplished much. Mm. So what was I gonna share with the world, right? Uh, Were you worried that the book, if you did launch the book, Who's interested in what you're? You absolutely, got yourself. absolutely. You know, this is you know you. Absolutely. You think you're a normal guy going through what normal people's what mad hex do? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. That came across too. But I suppose when you're, you know, I speak a lot about energy. Uh, part of my talks when I internationally speak, I speak a lot about energy and I speak about how uh, the three pillars of wealth, which is mental, physical, and spiritual. And if those three areas of your life aren't balanced, and you don't give to those three areas of your life. Um, you won't ride the journey of entrepreneurship in a balanced way because you know challenges will always happen. You know that's why only one one percent of the population are wealthy, and the other ninety nine percent quit is because they're not willing sometimes go through the hardships, and two, they don't know how to balance the journey of entrepreneurship. And some, and I got lost, right? So you know that became very clear to me. Uh, so when I started writing, I wanted to share the message of that ride. And the system within my book. Talks why, about, so why did you think you were lost though? What you know? Did you people say to you that? You know, oh what, no, what, no! What, I, it was very clear to you, me that I knew I was. What, lost. Because you were financially struggling. Or uh, not were, only financially, but you know, I just couldn't connect with people. 
Um, I didn't feel I didn't feel that I was mentally stable. I didn't feel that I was um, uh, pr I wasn't proud of who yeah. I was. Yeah. I didn't achieve what I thought I should be achieving, yeah. and that made me, I guess, vulnerable in all aspects mm -hmm. of the word. I guess. Um, so you know, you close yourself off because the more the less self value you give yourself. And how old were you then, back then? Uh, I was thirty one. So you, you know, sticks. Still young, lots of pressure. Yeah, lots of pressure. But London, I guess, has a way with that, and I guess that's probably a different conversation. But yeah. um, it's the whole pace of entrepreneurship. You know, when you want to achieve something, um, you start to give energy to that end goal, and everything that exists in the middle gets neglected because you want to achieve it. But um, as the saying goes, it keeps running faster. So back then, were you listening to motivational people or inspirational people? No, no. It's funny because my previous ten years, I was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but when it really hit home, I you're going through the challenge now, yeah. put it to work. I couldn't put it to work. And this is the problem of motivation. So you speaking. couldn't relate to, you didn't have anyone to relate to? You no, because I would come out of a workshop, a motivational workshop, mm -hmm. and one week down the line, it wouldn't work for me. And I'll tell you why, and it's my own opinion. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, mm -hmm. does not work by itself. And the reason it does not work by itself is because we live in a world that's very visual. There's so much distraction with the social media. The app, you come out your doorstep, you're being sold to. The bosses are filled with Gucci. The shops are filled with Burberry. There's too much distraction. So what happens is when you're being motivated and learning strategies that are mental, by the time you get into the real world after that motivational weekend, you start getting clouded with what the real world dictates, which is a distraction. So everything that you've learned in neuro-linguistic programming gets put in the back of your head. Hence the three pillars of wealth in my book, mental, physical, and spiritual. You need to understand the mental side, but you also need to stay connected to self and balance energy by working on yourself and your physical side. Because throughout the day as an entrepreneur, we, build, you know, we deal with multiple people, multiple backgrounds, multiple energies for the word. Um, and you know pressure. How do we release that pressure? It's not me saying to myself mentally, it's not for me. I'm putting it in the back of my head. It's still there. I've still absorbed it. For us to release that excess energy, we need to have some form of physical activity. We need to walk with nature. We need to disconnect. And this is why the three pillars of wealth has really helped me really transform in a way that I'm going to be honest with you, Nick. I don't. I didn't see myself coming out of it very soon. Uh, but the way I was able to transform myself and then see the physicality transforming as well, it was like amazing to see. Um, and I think um, I met, I happened to be in the right place at the right time because nothing's a coincidence. And I met a lady who, um, you know, she's a book writer, a ghost writer, and she was able to read my 14 pages and say, right, Sanjay, we don't need 14 chapters. Uh, we need to squeeze the juice out of everything that you have wrote and turn it into a powerful message <clears throat> with a powerful system that can help entrepreneurs ride their entrepreneurial journey. Because to me, an entrepreneur is not someone that just, uh, it's just about business, you know, takes the business from this to that. Me, an entrepreneur, is someone that takes control over their life, whether it's losing weight, mm -hmm. whether it's getting over a breakup, a relationship, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's someone that can really take that challenging moment and turn it into a positive yeah, but point. it's just all the mental thing. It is a mental it's thing. It's putting up with the pressures 24 7, seven days a week. And that's why neuro linguistic programming yeah. is not enough. Yeah. Because we, can't, we, can, we can try as much as we can to control the mind, and maybe over years and years you can overcome that and master your mind, but you need the physical and the spiritual side to you as well. Mm -hmm. Because you, know, you need to release stress by doing physical activity. Because what happens when you go to the gym and you dedicate 45 minutes to you, whether it's the gym, whether it's yoga, whether it's being kind, walking with nature, when you dedicate those 45 minutes to self, mm -hmm. you make consciously or subconsciously, you're gonna feel great. Mm -hmm. And that will get executed into the physical world in its way, shapes and forms. Mm -hmm. So imagine having that balance of mental, yes, mm -hmm. physical, yes, mm -hmm. and your spiritual so self. You know, all, all the people I follow on, you know, audio books or YouTube, they've all mixed up. They all do that. Yeah. You've got to look after your body, mind, and soul. 100%. Because you don't have the vehicle to cope with the pressures during the no. day. Well, the power of expressing self and being in a great state, mentally, physically, and spiritually, has enabled me to publish my book, um, travel the world speaking on public stage, um, launching my own gym wear line um, in a way that is completely mind-blowing. It's looking to launch this year. 
Um, I'm What's that going to be called? Aligned. Yeah. Aligned. Uh, so it's not just a piece of fabric or gym wear line, it's got a whole spiritual and energetic structure to it, which is about bringing people together. Um, again, through my book, so by me expressing and releasing everything that was inside on my worst moments in entrepreneurship and being able to express it through the book, as they say, it emptied my cup for more knowledge. So actually the whole structure of the gym wear line was done on my trip back from Singapore. So my nine hours journey back to London, I was able to literally put all that structure in place within three months. So home. once the book was written and yep. published, yep. when did it start changing? Because obviously that, that book is then becomes the your, catapult. Business, your business card. Correct. But it's a business card with context and oh, it's which opens up Crazy, yours. crazy, crazy. So how quick was that process? So uh, the book was launched on the 30, uh, 26th of February 2019. Yeah. And uh, I got my first speaking gig in, Ju in June 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so three months later. And it just opened everything. Like as in yeah. from property. You know, my existing business was still running. You know, we're still doing great things in property. But you start to believe in yourself, Nick. Mm -hmm. It's not so much how the outside world sees you, it's how you see yourself. And when you see yourself in the light and what you were able to achieve, <clears throat> you start to vibrate at that level. So when you start to vibrate at that level, it's not even the case of me being all over stage all over the world. You just are and feel amazing. So you did start you, to attract did you new find it in like Overwhelming, yeah. Overwhelming yeah. that people were getting inspired from your story because they were in the same position you, you were a few years before. And that's what's led me to believe and have a strong opinion on it's never the right time to share your success because even overcoming your most worst moments is enough of a message to catapult someone that could be on the same journey as you. So you don't have to wait until yeah. you're a billionaire or a millionaire. Yeah. Someone can really take note of exactly. that message. Just the things I put out on social media, you know, could be Instagram posts or YouTube videos or podcasts, you do get one or two people get inspired and they want to maybe, they want you to mentor them. And that's you enough. Know, if, if they phone up, I say, look, come to the office, we have a chat. 100%. Anyone wants to meet up, we have a chat and we, you know, we're talking 100%. about you know, motivating them and I've, I've literally met a number of people and I've sort of turned their little life around. And that's beautiful. You know, they've been depressed, yeah. they may be coming out of bankruptcy, yeah. uh, losing a girlfriend or yeah. they're just, yeah. you know, Challenges in Spend life, yeah. time with motivation, motivational people and you will raise your game. Oh, I mean, even after my trip to Singapore, which is my last gig, um, the amount of Facebook, um, you know, uh, people coming forward and saying, you know, could you yeah. mentor me? Could you spend time with me? You see, when I, when I was in a difficult place, all I wanted was someone to put their hand on my shoulder and say, Sandro, it's part of the journey. Welcome to failure because success is exactly. coming. But there wasn't enough awareness of that. Mm -hmm. I take a big response. I think, I think mentors today and coaches today don't understand the responsibility they have when they choose to occupy that position. Mm. Because when you're vulnerable, like I was, and you dedicate, you know, someone comes into your life and says, I can transform you, you are vulnerable. You're not thinking clear. Mm. You will get and, 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 and jump on any help you could get. So, you know, for anyone watching this video, if you are a mentor and you are a coach, please know vulnerable or people that are seeking your services do rely on that. So believe in yourself because it's a massive, huge responsibility when you decide to take a client of that caliber. Because, you know, I, wasn't, I wouldn't have been an easy transformation, but I knew, I knew I had to do it myself. And that built my story.